life in our community. And whereas it is the responsibility of our community to ensure parents, caregivers, and other adults who influence the health and well being of children have the support, knowledge, and concrete resources necessary to ensure all children thrive to their greatest potential. And whereas effect, effective children or effect child abuse prevention strategies succeed because of partnerships among agencies, schools, re religious organizations, law enforcement agencies, healthcare providers, and business community. And whereas we, as the city of Shelton residents, continue our commitment to protecting all members of the community and call upon all citizens to join together to increase public safety and prevent the further abuse and neglect of our children. Now, therefore, the City of Shelton Council does hereby proclaim April, 23rd, April 2023 as Child Abuse Prevention Month in the City of Shelton and urges all citizens, communities, state agencies, faith groups, medical facilities, elected leaders, medical providers, educators, and businesses to increase their participation in efforts to support family, thereby preventing child abuse and strengthening the community in which we live. And I'll sign this tonight. All right. And Deputy Mayor. Second proclamation tonight. I'm uh, very uh, humbled and pleased to be able to read uh, proclamations on behalf of the Shelton City Council celebrating National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, which is uh, a good way of saying uh, celebrating the hard work and dedication that our 911 dispatchers sitting just behind us over here, um, all the hard work that they do on a day to day basis. I just want to bring attention to that. On any given moment, any given time, there are three individuals sitting behind us in, in the 911 dispatch center ready and uh, willing to take those calls on quite possibly the worst day in a lot of our you know situations. And um, I'm very proud to have uh, been able to work alongside these folks and uh, the amount of time they spend away from their families um, uh, and doing doing the job of delivering public safety. Um, is uh, just just an insurmountable task, and I'm I'm very uh, supportive of our MaceCom uh, 911 dispatchers, call takers, and staff. Just want to recognize Director Mike Evans and Deputy Director Mike Rawlings are here today representing MaceCom, and I want to say uh, the thousands upon thousands of calls that come in are handled with a staff of 12, 24/7, 365 days a year. Um, that is uh, short of anything short of impressive, but um, we'll get into the proclamation today. So, whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services, and whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of law enforcement officers, firefighters, and emergency medical personnel is critical to the protection of life, preservation of property, and whereas the safety of our law enforcement officers, our firefighters, and emergency medical personnel is dependent upon quality and accuracy of information obtained from residents who telephone and call into MACECOM. Emergency Communications Center, and whereas public safety telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact our residents have with emergency services, and whereas public safety telecommunicators are the single vital link for our law enforcement officers, our firefighters, by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them with information and training their safety, and whereas public safety telecommunicators of MACECOM have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppressions of fires, and treatment of patients, and Whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the time during the performance of their job in the past year, especially under some of the most difficult circumstances. Therefore, be it resolved that the Shelton Washington City Council declares the week of April 9th to the 15th to be National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in the city of Shelton in honor of the dispatchers whose diligence and professionalism keeps our community and residents safe. Signed on this day, fourth day of April, 2023. Thanks, Thank you, Scott. Thank you, gentlemen. I encourage all members of the public to uh, drop them a drop them a nice note on the Facebook. Um, don't call nine one one and say thank you, uh, but uh, please don't. Uh, but uh, the kind words and the nice gestures go a long way, and they're greatly appreciated. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right, moving on to our business agenda. Public Works Director Jay Harris has information for us about purchasing equipment for the wastewater treatment plant. Got a different format going on here this evening. Um, good evening, uh, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Council, Jay Harris, your Public Works Director. Um, this evening, I have a sole source agreement that we need to enter with uh, Andrews, uh, uh, it's Andrews Separation Inc. 
And um, at the main wastewater treatment plant, um, we have water that comes to the plant. We have solids that come to the plant. We separate them. We dry out the solids. <clears throat> and then um, we ship those off site. The water obviously is treated, goes to is sanitized, treated, sanitized, and goes to Oakland Bay. And so uh, the equipment's getting older, though. You know, the plant's been going for about 10 years. The warranty on the solids handling equipment is lapsing. And so uh, as the plant gets older, conveyor belts, you know, that sort of thing, screens, all that, uh, we need to continue servicing it with their technicians and uh, also significant parts. So uh, this sole source agreement uh, allows us to use their proprietary stuff directly and um, without having to go and getting authorization, you know, from council for, you know, three quotes and that sort of thing, because uh, they are the proprietor distributor, they're the ones that make that equipment. So uh, that's it. And um, I'm available for questions. <clears throat> Thank you. Donna, do we have any public comment? No, we don't, Mr. Mayor. All right. Anyone in the audience that has not signed up would like to talk about this issue? All right. Do we have a motion? Move forward resolution number 1269-0323 for the April 18th Council meeting for the action agenda for further consideration. Second. All right. Com comments or questions? This is this we're not there's no planned maintenance right now. This is just hiring the, the provider to work on the equipment when it does break. That's correct. Uh, it does break. It's moving 24 seven for the most part. And so, you know, it starts to wear out over time. And, uh, and we have planned replacements, you know, we're being real proactive rather than reactive that, you know, we're not waiting until the last day that piece of equipment can run. You know, when we see it start having significant problems, um, we have replacement plans and that sort of thing. And by the way, enterprise asset management is kicked off. That's that new Tyler software system. And the, all the components of the wastewater plants will be in there, um, what their original value was, um, the replacement times, um, what the uh, schedule uh, maintenance activities are on it. And so it's going to be a real game changer, you know, for everybody at the city, you know, parks, public works and all that. It's probably going to take some time to implement, though. This is a pretty large undertaking. And uh, so Isaac, our GIS asset management guy, has been the team leader with IT and, and others. And so it's moving right along. But the plant and this equipment is going to be one of those components in that new software system. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All right. We have a motion to second to forward resolution number 1269-0323 to the April 18th Council meeting agenda for further consideration. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Interim City Manager Mark Siegler has information or details for us about purchasing and a purchase sale agreement. Sorry about that. Thank yeah, you, I was going to say at the beginning of the meeting, I'm sorry to welcome Mark for your first meeting. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Council members. Um, tonight, I'm presenting to you a purchase sale agreement uh, with Mason County Hospital District Number One for two parcels located up at North 13th Street, just across the street from the current um, uh, hospital or Mason Health campus. Uh, this comprises of 7.32 acres of city property that was declared surplus in October of 2021. Uh, with some other properties um, that uh, staff brought to you at that time. Uh, these were declared no longer useful life to the city of Shelton. Uh, and the hospital district certainly has um, some interest in maintaining a campus at that location and providing critical health facilities uh, within that one campus. So uh, staff have had the opportunity to discuss this uh, opportunity to sell the property uh, to them and negotiate a, a sale, purchase sale agreement that you see in front of you tonight. Uh, that purchase sale agreement uh, maintains the trail easement for the Teresa Johnson Trail at the Northern Terminus and North 13th Street. So if any um, development of that property does occur, they maintain that trail access and easement. Uh, there's a utility easement that will be maintained on that property. There's some uh, utility and infrastructure that runs parallel to North 13th 13th Street, just off that pedestrian path, and then the conservation easement with some of the critical slopes in that area, too. So uh, we're happy to present this to you tonight for further consideration at the next council meeting. Thank you, Mark. Donna, anyone sign up for public comment? No, we don't, Mr. Mayor. Right. Anyone in the audience like to speak on this? 
All right. Do we have a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move to uh, forward resolution 1270-0323 to the April 18th uh, City Council Action Agenda for further consideration. Second. All right. Comments or questions? This is water department property, so we'll go into the public fund for future water projects. Mr. Mayor, exactly right. All right. We have a motion to second to forward resolution number 1270-0323 to the April 18th, 2023 Council agenda for further consideration. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Public Works Director Jay Harris has details for about a six-year transportation improvement plan. Council Jay Harris again, your Public Works Director. Uh, so the six-year tip is something um, that we have to do every year, and um, it, uh, we put it on the state's website. And what it basically is, these are our capacity roadways for the most part. When you look at the list, there's some other items on there, some uh, all maintenance items and, and updating um, like an ADA transition plan, which is really important, um, some uh, systematic safety improvements. But this allows us having items on this tip allows us to secure state and federal funding. So it's important we get this done every year, get this uh, list uploaded to the state's website. And so it's an ongoing thing. Uh, Mason County does the same thing. All cities uh, do this on a yearly basis. And so uh, City Engineer uh, uh, Ken Gill gave the presentation at the last meeting, and uh, there has been no changes uh, to this packet, and uh, I'm available for any further questions. Thank you, Jay. Donna, anyone sign up for public comment? No, we don't, Mr. Mayor. Anyone in the audience like to speak on this issue? All right. We have a reading of resolution number 1264-0223. Resolution number 1264-0223, a resolution of the City of Shelton, Washington, adopting the comprehensive six-year transportation improvement program for the City of Shelton for the years 2024 through 2029. Thank you, Donna. Do we have a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt resolution number 1264-0223 and the six-year transportation improvement program attachment has presented. Second. Okay. All right. Comments or questions? Just one comment as a follow-up, Jay. I know we've discussed um, with the county counterparts as well. This is, as you mentioned, the living, living document, and we see this change year over year. And it's my continued hope that we can work closely with the staff at the county to better align our projects um, when we're doing things like Western Gateway or Brockdale. And there's an opportunity for both entities to um, work in a space at the same time. It decreases our mobilization costs the you know inconvenience to public, all of those things. And so I appreciate the work that you and your staff are continuing to do um, to work with the county to line up some of those projects. Yeah, just a quick update on that. Uh, Front Street, uh, we're preparing to uh, go out and uh, get the road ground out and uh, get it shaped and graded properly. And then the county's actually coming in to pay that, um, that we're going to pay for their people and their machine and then pay for the asphalt directly from the plant. And so we'll see how that goes. Um, they're available for just a few short days every year because they got obviously a county they got to go take care of, right? And so uh, it'll be a great project. So that's sort of the kickoff to a, re a renewed relationship with them and to do some joint paving projects. So we helped them do a bunch of grinding a few years ago on one of their roads. And so now they're coming in to uh, help us pave one of our roads. So we look forward to uh, look, working with them further. Brockdale was one. We also have some other projects coming up with them in the future. So thank you. Very good. Any other comments or questions? Okay. <clears throat> we have a motion to second to adopt resolution number 1264-0223 and the six-year TIP attachment as presented. <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Senior Planner Jason Dose has information for us regarding an intent to annex. I do. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. At your last meeting, last regular meeting, excuse me, on March 21st, you were made aware that we have had an applicant come forward and request to annex a 40-acre piece of property located north of the Shelton Springs subdivision, south of Island Lake, kind of by, if you're familiar with the Frog Acres property, 
It's a single owner of a 40 acre vacant piece of property that is in the process of subdividing. Now this is, this is kind of an interesting scenario. The um, county's processing the subdivision. It became apparent they needed city services to do the subdivision, water and sewer. They would access through the city, through city streets. Uh, so it became apparent annexation was the proper path to go. So this single owner applied in February we're bringing it to you at this stage of the game. Really, all all's we're doing is our decision makers are making the call. Does this annexation configuration look appropriate? Do we want to accept it, amend it, that sort of thing? Staff's recommendation is yes. Um, nothing's changed since we presented it at the last meeting, and we're requesting that you approve the resolution that's attached <laughs> to the document, and that would authorize them to officially petition the city and go through the official process to annex the property. Thank you, Jason. Donna, anyone inside of a public comment? No, we don't, Mr. Mayor. Anyone in the audience have to speak on this issue? All right. Then we have a reading of resolution number 1268-0323. Resolution number 1268-0323, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Shelton, Washington, accepting a proposed annexation for the Meadows Edge annexation area pursuant to RCW 35A.14.120. Thank you, Donna. Do we have a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 1268-0323 as presented. Second. All right, comments or questions? Just one comment. I remember when that used to be all treed up on that property, that big piece of property, all over Mountain View. Mm -hmm. And uh, cross country used to run through the trees in their cross country meet. So it's exciting to see progress and uh, building tops and more property that we can use. We definitely need houses here. here. All right. I do think it's worth mentioning, and staff mentioned this at our last meeting, that this is not the Huff and Puff property that is being. Right. I've gotten a lot of questions about that. So this is not a property that's not going anywhere. This nope. is a separate privately owned piece. This is on the other side of the development, uh, the Sage and Tarragon, across yeah. the high school. On the yeah, on the, on the northwest yeah. side of that development yeah. across from the high school. Pub and pub adjacent. Yes. All right. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution number 1268-0323. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving pretty fast right now. Mark, will you give us your first city manager report? I'd be happy to, Mayor. Thanks for breaking me in <laughs> lightly, right? Um, first and foremost, I want to thank the council, thank the community, thank city staff again. Uh, it's been um, going as well as I could expect. Um, it's busy. Um, we're we're uh, we're a busy entity, and um, and getting up to speed on everything that. Uh, the previous city manager was handling and everything else in the community um, takes a little bit of time. So I appreciate your patience to work through this process. And I'm just, just happy um, that I can provide the services and serve my community and serve the council and every opportunity that I have available to me. So uh, moving on from there, um, we have established the Spotlight Shelton event for Tuesday, April 25th. Uh, that will be in place of a study session that evening. Uh, we're going to kind of focus on a, a government 101 or a Shelton government 101, um, if you will. Uh, so that will focus on, uh, we hope to um, provide this information to anybody that's interested, but particularly those that might be um, considering running for a council, three council seats that we have available uh, this year. Um, we'll go over the form of government, this is council manager form of, of government, how it was formed, what the roles of the council will be, are, excuse me, uh, the, the role of the city manager within that government, and then how um, our entity is broken up into departments and what those departments' roles and responsibilities are. So organi organizational chart, um, their, their duties, what they carry out day to day, some of the planning processes and long, long range planning that we go through, uh, budgets. And then we're certainly available to take questions and answers uh, for that point forward uh, to inform potential candidates and the general public as much as we can on how the city operates. Um, Empty Bowls event starts next week on the 12th, 12th, 19th, and 26th. The event that is, um, I should know this, I, it's under my purview when we started, I think it's 19 years. We missed a couple of years 
uh, during the pandemic, but the Shelton Arts Commission works very hard on this every year to provide an art event for our community with proceeds that uh, support the Saints Pantry Food Bank. So terrific event. If you haven't been there, the general public is um, welcome to come in, create a ceramic bowl. Uh, the next week they would glaze it or paint that bowl. And then we have some great restaurants and community partners that uh, supply soup and bread uh, for a nominal donation. And they receive that bowl to take home and the funds go to support the Saints Pantry Food Bank. So uh, a fun event very communal, very social event, uh, quite noisy out in the main room and a lot of fun for all ages. You don't have to have previous ceramic experience. So um, don't be afraid to come in and um, just uh, get your hands dirty. Um, talking with uh, Director Harris and the rest of our staff here, we're entering spring, you know, as you can tell, the sun's out and it's gonna rain here in a few minutes, uh, <laughs> but stuff is budding, uh, grass is growing, uh, there's uh, allergies going around from what I hear. Uh, so that means it's spring. So the crews are out maintaining our right of ways, maintaining our parks, uh, getting ready for the busy season out there, uh, mowing, pruning, uh, getting irrigation systems ready, drinking fountains ready and things like that. So they're out there busy and running around and trying to get uh, things up to speed uh, for our busy spring and summer season and make our community look, uh, look presentable. And Mark, do you still have seasonal openings right now? Actually, we do. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, we've advertised for seasonals for Parks and Public Works. Uh, we just started one seasonal in parks this week. So that is a Monday through Friday shift, day shift, excuse me, Wednesday through Sunday day shift. Uh, we'll have an evening shift available in the next couple of weeks as well. So that's somebody that closes down our parks at night and services softball games and picnic shelter rentals and those types of things that happen at Neyland Park and Luke Field and Callahan Park and um, areas like that. So we're um, really looking forward to filling those positions and providing that extra service to our community. And I know the Public Works Department has some openings within the Water Department. They provide some of those mowing and you know weed eating, weed eating activities and things like that. So uh, the skilled full-time staff can spend time on replacing water meters and activities like that that are so important uh, that are taking place right now. Um, Director Harris also mentioned EAM project that has kicked off over the last week. Uh, staff is working diligently on implementing that program. It will take some time uh, to get up to speed, but we're really looking forward to be, being able to provide the data um, to the council and to the community, um, as well as track all of our assets, in a more logical and meaningful way with replacement schedules, um, maintenance schedules, work order systems, and all the things that come with that electronic uh, uh, management system. So we're really looking forward to that and uh, implementing that when the time comes. And that is all I have for you tonight. Thank you, Mark. Any comments or questions for Mark? Mark, a comment, not really a question. I am excited that uh, we've got three potential new uh, people coming in on the council. I think we can breathe some new life into it. Um, and I hope people actually show up and run for it. Uh, so, so do I. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, can I just make a comment? Please. Maybe embarrassing a little bit, but we had our first one on one with Mark, and something that just right out of the gate, um, I was just impressed to hear. You know, we kind of made the comment, you know, Jeff, Jeff got us to a level. Mark's going to help us stay on course. But kind of the first thing Mark said to us is like, I hope you're not expecting me to just be a warm body to fill a chair. I want to get stuff done. I want to keep the ball moving. Um, so the heck do we, you know, so we're excited to keep this going. And um, just, yep, city manager moved on. We got Mark in the helm now. And I, I don't see any issues coming. I think it's just good things ahead. So I'm um, excited to work with you. Appreciate that. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> At this time, members of the public are invited to make public comment on any topic that's not listed on the agenda. Donna, have you been signed up for public comment tonight? Yes, we do, Mr. Mayor. Right. Our first speaker is George Blush. How are we doing, guys? My name is George Blush. I'm a city of Sheldon resident um, and kind of an animal guy. You may have heard that about me. Um, I love them and I have a lot of fun with them. So a lot of people come to me and bring to me issues that come up within the animal community here. Um, one of the things that came up recently was you guys did a great job at the dog park to set up the gate so the wheelchair could get in there. But then once they get in there, it's all mud. So you have a gentleman here that the only place that he can go because he's in a wheelchair, he can't walk his dog around, is the dog park. So when he gets inside the gate, he's sliding. And, you know, it's creating issues. And so there's a lot of different community members that are concerned. In fact, he was there when, when I came here this evening. 
So it just kind of, I was hoping that there was a way maybe we could put a cement pad or something in there so that, you know, that wheelchair accessible for the people that need to get in there and do that. You know, a lot of the seniors love that part of there and it's good for them. And that's kind of what it was designed for. So if we could just get a little cement pad put in there, I think that would help out a whole lot. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Our next speaker is Dean Jewett. Morning, Dean Jewett, lifetime Mason County member. Happy to be here. Mark, super excited to have you in that position. Uh, if you don't all know what Mark's already stated, Mark is 100% vested in his community. See, I say that 100% vested in his community, and it's our community. I would really like to see the next city manager be 100% vested in our community. And that means looking from within, promoting from within, and even if, God forbid, our police chief leaves, Let's look at promoting from within. I think that we have a lot of good talent here. I'm really excited to have Mark sit there. I don't think Mark's gonna sit there and be a, a, you know, another warm body or a warm chair. He doesn't, doesn't strike me like that. He gets up and he gets things done. We may not always agree, but that's just fine too. Okay, so I appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Uh, we do have a, several positions available. Uh, apparently you have to live in city for a year. So I'm sure that there's probably at least one individual that's happy that I may not be able to run me. I'm bummed, but oh, well, I guess I'll be sitting up there in two years, two and a half, uh, railroad tracks, pump station, new faces, camps being, uh, posted, uh, by DOT, just a bunch of topics I wanted to hit on real quick. Don't know if I can get through them all right on the railroad tracks heading out of town. Okay, you go walk those. There's tents back there. Uh, just watch somebody drop trowel and leave a little treat for somebody else coming through there. I wonder what that could have been. Uh, we got just the other day, Thursday, I counted 20 new faces in town. And believe you me, I know the faces. So we have 20 new people in town, if not more. Okay, they didn't come here because of an economic crisis. Where are they coming from? Let's all play chess here. They're coming from Olympia or other areas besides Shelton. DOT just posted a lot of the freeway camps. Where are they gonna go? They go right downtown, they hop on a shuttle and they come to Shelton. Why? Because we have a ton of services, Turning Point, Community Lifeline, Crossroads Housing, uh, Youth Connection, uh, St. David's, the Jesus Food Bus. We have all these services. Does Shelton have to be known? to have all these services? Shouldn't we take care of our own first? Uh, transparency. Let's get a civilian board together so maybe we have a little bit of input onto this new city manager like I sat on when we picked some of the sergeants. You guys are set up here by us to make these decisions, but let us help you make those decisions, okay? Uh, the, uh, the alcoves, how many times? We have an alcove over here that has chocolate syrup all over it. There's broken glass, there's needles. Uh, an individual will take a crap between his cardboard boxes and then sleep on it. Somebody else has to clean it up. That's not cool. Thank you. Thank you. And we have one person via Zoom and that is Colleen Carmichael. Good evening. I just wanted to uh, take a moment and talk a little bit about last time I spoke. Um, I believe it was brought up that the information was not relevant to Shelton. So I want to talk to Shelton specifically. And I went on to Indeed just because I don't have access necessarily to the same numbers that you at the city will. But uh, for a Shelton police officer, their salary is showing at $31 an hour. Uh, Mason General Emergency Room Doctor is showing at approximately $96 an hour. I did not ask for the sheriff salary because that's Mason County, but for a case manager for one of our organizations, the hourly salary is approximately $21, $21 an hour. So when you compare those salaries, when someone is called to site for a homeless person, it is far less expensive to the city of Shelton to have that person housed. I also took the number of homeless people that we currently show on our last count, which is 477 individuals. 
the top 10% are typically what are called the high users, the one that costs the most. If you take the 477 and you get 10% of that, that's approximately 48 people. 48 people at $35,000 a year, which I told you is the general average cost of a person on the streets based on who's serving them. That's $1,680,000 a year just for the top 10% of the homeless count. If they were housed, that cost would reduce to $720,000. So housing those 48 people every year is going to save the city of Shelton $960,000 a year. This is all data that is available through the city. They can look, you guys can all look that up if you want to yourselves and get more accurate numbers. But I'm saying this because I listened to the budget the last time we presented, and it is important for you to make the most effective use of the positions that you have and have your police officers and fire do the jobs that they were paid to do, which is to serve the public for fire emergencies and for police emergencies and not have their time spent dealing with a homeless population when there are providers in town, such as Quixote Communities. Dean, you did not mention us. I was a little sad about that. <laughs> We actually would be able to provide housing at a reduced cost and get the people that are causing some of the most um, challenging issues on the streets. But all the other services in town actually do not increase the use of people coming in. There are services available at a far greater number in the larger cities. It is actually just helping to reduce the people who are out there using them by giving them services. It does help stabilize them. So I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm here to help in whatever way I can, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to partner with the city of Shelton to resolve these issues. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak that's not signed up? All right. Our next meeting is scheduled. I'm sorry, council have any items for discussion? All right. Our next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, April 18th at 6 p.m. We also have a study session Tuesday, April 11th at 6 p.m. This meeting is adjourned at 6.34 p.m.